Okay. <clears throat> Takes a long, get, long time to get warmed up, right? But, um... <laughs> um <clears throat> so... Yeah, so, yeah, where I left off, it's better to be warmed up and to be doing than not be doing. Uh, diet is also important, 100%. 100 uh, let that as a little side note. If you travel to a foreign country and you find the diet is not to your liking, don't... <laughs> Don't stay. <clears throat> yeah, so, um, <clears throat> so what was I? I've got to get ready. I've got like uh, two days uh, for the next class. I finally have time for myself here. Um, so. start somewhere, right? So, why is this, I think I left off of page, page 207, um, and, uh, <clears throat> so configure terminal is not the, um, I need to get into the, the hash mode, and the hash mode is enabled. Okay. So now I'm enable. So um, it wants me in config. So now I go into configure terminal. Uh, <coughs> Version commands. Okay. So now I'm in config and do uh, interface fast Ethernet. Now, question is, did I already do this, do all of this? Um, I've got some glasses there that I want to buy. Uh, well, sure, why not, right? So, zero, one. Uh, these two make me feel a little funny, don't they? So I should look around here and see maybe I should move to another chapter. I'll s I'll, I'll do what I what I can. What I, I'll see what I can do here <coughs> and then move. This material is highly technical. Description. Description is the command. Um, uh, exit. What did I exit? The interface. <coughs> so now I can move again. Put the interface range. Now I'm on a different range. That worked. And <coughs> didn't work on um, a different. Uh, I mean, it worked on a different computer, but when I used it on this for range, it didn't work on my computer. Oh, now I'm in. I have no idea. I don't know why it didn't work last time. Um, but it could have been the switch that I was using. Um, it on. But this time it works. Um, <clears throat> I told the class it was because... Um, Because uh, because of the software, the software had bugs. But sometimes, you know, you think that it's software bugs, but actually, it's um, either you that have a bug, or it's not really a software bug. It's just a parameter that it's the software is on at that moment. So it's not really a. Um, you know, something that's permanent. Bugs are permanent, and 
the, the engineers have to go in, SWEs have to go in and, and, and fix them, correct it, so they're not permanent. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so what is that? You know, like that. So this control controls these, that, that's control Z to exit out of the config, if range I'm out. So, um, now, now I'll use this command. I have no idea why my keyboard keeps getting stuck, even though I'm not not using it. It seems like it's like somebody is messing with my keyboard all the time. Like some some magical creature is coming in and and playing with my keyboard or something. <coughs> um, when I'm not here. Um, See, there it is right there, see? I had keys, different keys that were stuck before. Now the space bar is stuck. I didn't, I'm not eating on the keyboard, so I'm, I know I'm not doing it. Show <coughs> your face is stuck. It could be that the university staff are letting their kids come in here and play with my, play with my stuff while I'm gone or something. I don't know what it is, but <clears throat> anyway, the the interface range fast is net eleven to twenty. Um, these are switches that <clears throat> is showing these ports here. <clears throat> so if we you can zoom in, this is the physical um, uh, the physical interface. I think you can call that the user interface UX, the physical UX. Um, <clears throat> so you can see the switches here. Uh, physically, and then on the command we can um, program them. More, more, more. Oh, we have a look. We have a gig zero one. So magically, the software is the way it's supposed to be. Because I was trying to get the gig, I was trying to get this gig uh, <coughs> switch, and it didn't have it. So either it was the, it just so happened to be the virtual switch that I had that I had on there at the time that I was using, or <coughs> the software automatically fixed itself, uh, pushed uh, up updates. Um, all right, so let's uh, let's try um, uh, the next thing. So yeah, I do want to read this also, like what what is it doing? What does it mean, right? <clears throat> what does it mean? So first focus on the mechanics of moving around in configuration mode again by looking closely at the command prompts. The various interface commands move the user from global mode into interface configuration mode for a specific interface. So I wanted to say that the book actually says, this is a very good book, this is a really good book, and the book says that, um, um, this is also a Cisco approved book, uh, like one of the only ones. Um, so... Uh, the, the book says, the narrator says that I should read around um, this uh, this concept of what I'm doing. I should know what I'm what the commands are for, like what concept the commands are part of. <clears throat> so if I just try to go through and learn commands, um, uh, I might get lost because I should, um, I really have to, really do have to know a concept in which the commands exist. Uh, as well too <clears throat> so for instance the example the example configures the duplex speed and description commands all just after the interface fast ethernet 01 it would be nice if these are if these are like they have links on them it would be easier to um, research like what does duplex means if you go to oh yeah see right so you for duplex and uh, someone 207 I forget that but <clears throat> Let me find out where the first use of duplex it means. Obviously, um, you know I could ask um, Google, but oh my God, you see, don't you dare! Like when you're in China, um, <laughs> everything's about the written, the written book, the written text. Um, <clears throat> he who commands the books commands the universe. Uh, <clears throat> It's the law in China. Um, <clears throat> the written, the written book. But uh, 
<clears throat> so basically, the use of more modern switches allows you to use of full duplex logic, which is much faster and similar, simpler than half duplex logic. Sending a modern <coughs> Ethernet lens using full duplex, uh, some feathers still than half duplex. So full duplex is faster than half duplex, but what the hell is duplex? Um, mm. It doesn't doesn't really tell me here. I mean, I can find out more. But modern Ethernet lens use a variety of Ethernet physical scanners, but with standards <coughs> Ethernet frames that can float over any of these uh, types of physical links. Each individual link can run at a different speed, but each link allows the atta node, attached nodes to send the bits in uh, the frame to the next node. <coughs> they must work together to deliver the data from the sending from the sending Ethernet node to the destination node. The process is relatively simple on purpose. Uh, on purpose, the simplicity lets each device send a large number of frames per second. <coughs> the simplicity lets each device send uh, send a large number of frames per second. So frames uh, frames are packets. Um, the Ethernet network <coughs> uses full duplex on each link, but the concept might be difficult to see. Full duplex means that the NIC or switch port, the NIC or switch port has no half duplex restrictions. <coughs> so to understand full duplex, you need to understand half duplex as follows. Half duplex, the device must wait and send if it is currently receiving a frame. In other words, it cannot send and receive at the same time. Full duplex, the device does not have to wait before sending. It can send and receive at the same time. You see, this, that was the other thing I was trying to say, is that it's actually easier to learn. Like, it says, oh, you should understand the concept <coughs> um, with the commands, right? That the commands uh, exist in. The concept, not the commands exist in. But the, the thing with this CCNA, CCNP, CCIE, is that <coughs> it... Uh, it's not very hard technology to understand. Um, uh, uh, software engineering, architecture, algorithms are a lot are a lot harder than than this than the concepts here in um, in this uh, network uh, associate professional uh, you know expert uh, uh, stuff. And uh, <coughs> oddly enough, the what this is network engineering basically. But um, oddly enough. Um, <coughs> There are really solidly recognized certifications in network engineering, but there are not solidly recognized certifications that can get you jobs like the CCMP in, <coughs> in software engineering. Um, which is like so, you know, which is unfortunate. I guess a lot of people, too many people. I don't know. I don't know why they they don't do it. Um, but uh, I don't know why they don't make um, <coughs> recognitions, I mean, certifications, recognized certificates like CCMP for, for software engineering. Um, <coughs> um, I, I've seen it before. I've seen it for, for Linux. Um, I've seen it for Python. Um, uh, I do have some examples here. Uh, I'm thinking too much, also getting distracted. But... Um, <coughs> Uh, so here the PCP, P2, 3, and so on. This is a Python certification. Uh, if somebody gets that, I mean, they should be, uh, you know, they should be acknowledged as having, you know, uh, some skills. But again, it's always about, for them, for the software engineering job, it's always about <coughs> passing the interview test. It's always about proving yourself to the interviewer. Um, so they really don't care, like... Um, I mean, you know, a degree helps, you know, like if you have a master degree, they'll say, okay, well, you know, we'll let you in to the job, but <clears throat> you can also pass, just pass the interviews and get in, so um, it's not like they really don't care about certifications. <clears throat> Either you have a master degree or you, um, you pass the interview. Tests the interview tests. <coughs> um, but in network engineering, you can just like literally just get 
the, the, the CCNP uh, certificate and you'd get a job. Um, so, different different industry uh, looks different. So, I think that's what I think. I think you'd get a job if you got the CCNP. You'd get a job. <coughs> so the full duplex, the device does not have to wait before sending. It can send and receive at the same time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, going into well. Um, let's see if I have internet now. Okay, so this is where I basically am just going to say, uh, never mind internet, I'll just try to understand what, uh, what I can <laughs> from the PDF and it will go to the PPT and that's what I'm doing so um, I mean that's what I'll do that's what I'm doing so using half duplex with uh, LAN hubs to understand the need for half duplex logic in some cases you have to understand a little about an older type of networking device called the LAN hub when the IE triple E uh, first introduced 10 base T in 90, 1990 Ethernet switches did not exist yet Instead, networks used a device called a LAN hub, right? So Ethernet switches did not exist yet. Instead, <coughs> they used a LAN hub. Like a switch, a LAN hub provided the number of RJ45, but the RJ45 hasn't changed, right? Ports as a place to connect links to PCs. However, hubs used different uh, rules for forwarding data. <coughs> LAN hubs forwarded data for data using physical layer standards rather than data link standards and are therefore considered to be layer one devices. When an electrical signal comes comes in one in one hub, the hub repeats that electrical signal out all all ports. One hub port, the hub repeats that electrical signal out of all ports except the incoming port. By doing uh, by doing so, uh, data reaches all the rest of the nodes connected to the hub. So the data hopefully reaches the correct destination. A hub has no concept of Ethernet frames or addresses make decisions based on those addresses and so on. The downside of using LAN hubs is that if two or more devices transmitted a signal at the same at the same instant, the electrical signal collides and becomes garbled. The hub repeats all received electrical signals even if it even if it receives multiple signals at the same time. For example, <coughs> with PCs arching above sending electrical signal at the same instant of time. Uh, steps 1a and 1b and the hub repeating both electrical signals out toward Larry on the left. Step 2. <coughs> For completeness, know that the hub floods each frame out of all of the ports except the incoming ports. So Archie's frame goes, goes to both Larry and Bob. Bob's frame goes to Larry and Archie. <coughs> Whoa. Except the incoming. If you replace the hub in twitch one with the LAN switch, the switch prevents the collision on the left. The switch operates as a layer two device, meaning that it looks at the data link header and trailer. Uh, a switch would look at the MAC addresses and even if the switch needed to forward both frames to Larry on the left, it, the switch would send one frame in queue the other frame until the first frame was finished. Now back to the issue created by the hub's logic, collisions. To prevent these collisions, the Ethernet nodes must use half duplex logic instead of full duplex logic. A problem occurs only when two or more devices send at the same time. A half duplex logic tells the nodes that if someone else is sending, wait before sending. <coughs> For example, back in figure 223, Imagine that Archie began sending his frame early enough so that Bob received the the first bits of that frame before Bob tried to send his own frame. Bob at step 1b would notice that he was receiving a frame from someone else and using half duplex, lo duplex logic. would simply uh, wait to send the frame listed at step 1b. <coughs> Nodes that use half duplex logic actually use a relatively well-known algorithm called carrier sense multiple access with collision detection. Uh, okay, carrier sense multiple access collision detection. 
The algorithm takes care of the obvious cases, but also the cases caused by unfortunate timing. For example, two nodes could check for an incoming frame at the exact same time, both realize that no other node is sending, and both send their frames at the exact same instant, causing a collision. CSMA CD covers these cases as well as follows. The device with a frame to send listens until the Ethernet is not busy. When the Ethernet is not busy, the sender begins sending the frame. <coughs> The sender listens while sending to discover whether a collision occurs. Collisions might be caused by many reasons, including unfortunate timing. If a collision occurs, all currently uh, sending nodes do the following. They send a jamming signal that tells all nodes <coughs> that a collision happened. They independently choose a random time to wait before trying again <coughs> to avoid unfortunate timing. The next attempt starts again at step one. Although most modern LANs do not often use hubs and therefore do not need to use half duplex, enough old hubs still exist in enterprise networks so that you need to be ready to understand duplex issues. Each NIC and switch port has a duplex setting. For all links between PCs and switches or between switches, use full duplex. Uh, between switches, use full duplex. However, for any link connected to a LAN hub, the connected LAN switch and NIC port should use half duplex. Note that the hub itself does not use half duplex logic, instead just repeating incoming signals out every other port. Uh, figure 224 shows an example of full duplex links on the left and, s and a single LAN hub on the right. The hub then requires us to use FO2 interface. <coughs> to use half duplex logic along with the PCs connected to the hub. Okay, interesting things, but um, when we're talking about um, key topics, really, is what um, key topics um, <coughs> I need to coordinate myself. So. Um, what was this? Oh, this this is a key topic. Full and duplex in Ethernet land. Uh, yeah, I do really have to kind of read the contents to understand the uh, the diagram, the figure. Uh, what is it saying? You have to read it. And then uh, <coughs> key topic here. Key topic elements is these are these figures. To understand the figure, I have to read the I have to read the contents. Drawing of a typical wired and wireless enterprise LAN, several types of Ethernet LANs, and some details about each. Conceptual drawing, transmitting, and one directional each over two different electrical circuits between two Ethernet nodes. 10 and 100 Mbps Ethernet straight through cable pinouts. Very <coughs> detailed on the actual physical components. Ethernet IEEE wired LAN, wireless LAN, Ethernet frame, 10 base T, 100 base T, 100 base T, gigabit Ethernet, and so on. Straight STP, straight through cable, crossover cable, Ethernet address, MAC address, unicast address, broadcast address, frame check sequence, transceiver multi mode, single mode, electromagnetic interference, EMI core, cladding, fiber optic cable. Key terms you should know. So, chapter two was trying to know all of these things. Uh, key terms, key topics, <clears throat> is trying to know all of these things. And we'll certainly need a chapter and chapter review. One key to doing well on the exams for repetitive space review sessions. Review this chapter's material using either the tools in the book or interactive tools with the same material found on the book's companion website. Refer to the Your Study Plan element for more details. Outlines the 2 8 outlines the key elements and where you can find them. To eight outlines the key elements and where you can find them. Uh, to better track your study progress, record where when you completed these activities in the second column. So, <coughs> what it um, what it uh, <coughs> always says in the chapter review on this is the same thing um, in this book. Chapter review, I, you know, I expected to give a summary of the chapter, but it doesn't, it just says this paragraph and then, uh, and then it gives the tables. These are the unique uh, parts. Um, I love it. Yeah. 
Uh, so that's chapter reviews is always these, um, the table, um, the, you know, key terms. So we're going to do that, the same thing for um, chapter three. <coughs> Let's do that now. I'm going to try to do that now. And watch. So, see chapter three? Watch. Just for C. Discuss how you should study the practice content skills from each other before we go on the instruction. I'm going to introduce the tools. See? Same thing. Exactly the same thing. So, you can see this, the, the structure. <coughs> and what I want to do is I like doing a top down study approach. So, <coughs> the um, for each of these, so what I'll do is for the chapters, for each chapter, um, I'll review the um, these tables, the chapter review, and get, um, you know, get a top-down approach. Uh, if I uh, want to dive into something deeper, then I'll go there. Um, so, unfortunately, there's no clicking on these things so I can see or, you know, like hover. Um, so this book is not that dynamic, that interactive. Um, <clears throat> but uh, that would be a nice feature in the future if PDFs do have that. Um, um, so the main parts are these these three like you can see here and I can just repeat this so um, let's see review element key topics key terms um, so there's this key topics key terms answer did good questions did I did I know that already review memory tables <clears throat> okay where, where's the um, oh did good for the chapter did, did the Chapter two have them? Let me see. It says right. I did go review. Yeah, it does. <coughs> okay, but and I, but there is no. Take the question or review review memory tables. The book, the website, book PTP. PTP. I forgot what that is. Um, memory tables. The book and the website. Uh, what website? Um, <coughs> This has a lot of material in it. The website has a lot of um, different practices, but I think that's not necessary. The books, just the book contents, understanding the book contents uh, is enough, I think, um, <clears throat> at first. That's the core thing and should be done um, first. So, um, so page numbers uh, 3656, um, that looks like it's contained in 20 pages, the key topics. Um, and this table looks like the, the, the main keys of the, of the chapter. Because as you tell, as you can see, and then also this one too, right? Key terms, you know. So I reviewed this, didn't make much sense, but this in essence is a reflection of this. So if I look in here, um, we'll see it in more, this in more detail. So drawing, drawing of typical uh, so what happened in chapter uh, two? Drawing of a typical wired and wireless enterprise LAN, several types of Ethernet LANs, and some de and some details about each. Conceptual drawing of transmitting in one direction each over two different electrical circuits between two Ethernet nodes. 10 and 100 Mbps Ethernet straight through cable pinouts. 10 and 100 Mbps Ethernet crossover cable pinouts. A list of devices that transmit on wire pair one, two, and pair three, six. And also what we're looking for is the commands. What I like to practice are the commands in the chapter. I said I was going to do that. And so those commands are related to these, this right here, these key topics. Typical use for straight through and crossover Ethernet cables. Physical transmission concepts in a multi-mode cable. Comparison between UTP, MM, and SM Ethernet cabling. Format of Ethernet MAC addresses. Definitions of half duplex and the full duplex. Examples of which interface uh, it says use full duplex and which interfaces use half duplex. <coughs> so, let's go to page 56, these figures 224, for example, and look for commands around them, right? So we've got 3, 2, 9, 10, 12, 3, uh, table 2, 3, figure uh, 13, 16, 20, and 24. Okay, that's not... Obviously, there were more figures than that. Out of 24, there was uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 figures used out of 20, 24, which is uh, one-third of the figures are key. Um, so one-third, we look for the commands around these one-third. Um, so, <clears throat> so we're figure 224. Um, okay, let's just, let me just search for that.
we should get it like two times. Well, we got it three times. Okay. And that's the third time. Yeah. Okay, so three times, right? Two times. Where's the first time? There. Okay. Mentioned done the figure. And then review. So in two twenty four. Okay, that's the last one. What? So where are the commands? Where's the last time we see that I see a command? Yeah. Or, or I can see that I didn't see any any command for that. So let me look around. Um, obviously, go back to where it came from. We got this one from here. And I'll look for figure 220. So the reason why I do this is also to show the, the, the pedagogy that I've learned. There's a few reasons why I do it, right? One, it's related to <coughs> the PhD, getting a PhD. Second, uh, it's related to the, the teaching, um, um, the pedagogy, my teaching style, um, <coughs> you know, which is called pedagogy. And uh, three, um, the contents of what I um, know and learn <coughs> or I should say contents of what I know what I know for employers if an employer wants to in the industry uh, showing employers in the industry what I what I know so and then this is, these videos can also be used by students uh, of my students um, that can um, reference these uh uh, you know, from my, my students from my class, and they can reference these videos later. <coughs> so, Figure Two Twenty, uh, Structure of Unicast Ethernet Address. <coughs> if I want to, it's important, but <coughs> Two Twenty shows the structure of the Unicast and MAC address with the o OUI. Um, organizational unique identifier, vendor assigned, naked cards, interfaces, <coughs> structure of unicast Ethernet address, structure of the unicast MAC address with the OUI. The IEEE also calls the universal MAC address global MAC addresses. Uh, Ethernet addresses go by many names. LAN address, Ethernet address, hardware address, burned in address, physical address, universal address, or MAC address. I was going to say, that not that the same thing? So, um, yeah, a MAC address is an Ethernet address. For example, the term burned-in address refers, BIA refers to the idea that a permanent MAC address has been encoded, burned into the ROM chip on the, NI, on the NIC. As another example, the IEEE uses the term universal address to emphasize the fact that the address assigned to a NIC by a, a manufacturer should be unique among all MAC addresses in the universe. <coughs> Universal address, the address assigned to a NIC by a manufacturer. In addition to unicast addresses, um, Ethernet uh, it also uses group addresses. Um, so these are different MAC addresses. The question is, is it how important is this, you know, for me? Um, <clears throat> it's obviously important uh, for the exam, whether they wouldn't mention it. Um, like I said, you know, the best way to know what's most important for the exam is to have the exam open, you know. Uh, what I should do is, um, <clears throat> in fact, do exactly that, find practice commands. Um, that's exactly what I should be doing, actually. I should have the uh, one um, practice exam opened uh, and then use that as material to study. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, but anyway, um, the reference point, the finishing this reference point, were there commands, what were there commands around this figure? Uh, 220, okay, was there anything? There's a table, so we really don't have, we really don't have anything, anything yet, right? <coughs> and, um, yeah, I still didn't see, didn't see any commands in there. Um, 
Um, so I said that the most important thing was config commands for routers, but um, um, yeah, for the for the CCMP CCIE exams, troubleshooting, you know them. Uh, <clears throat> um, but I, I want to make sure that I'm on the right path, so I want practice exams. I want mock exams. Um, I want to use the book based off of trying to pass exams. Exam. See, this chapter covers the following exam topics. So, and this is exactly how you are supposed to do software engineering, like like programming. The way I naturally learned as a kid is is actually the way, or that I liked to learn as a kid, is actually in the, the way I found that I really <clears throat> the style of learning that I like to do is the same way that you should solve a software engineering solution um, or at least one way and that is um, backtracking it's called backtracking um, they find uh, you find the point that you want to end up at um, and this is just for the program for coding the architecture um, so you start at the point of, for the solution that you want to be at and then you <coughs> go back to the starting point um, and uh, algorithms can do that um, at a certain speed um, and they have different methods of doing that um, but that's essentially what they're trying to do is that they're trying to go get to the end point and then explore the rest of the solution space um, after they have reached uh, some type of endpoint. Um, so, um, what I'm trying to do um, that's essentially what I'm trying to do right now. It's actually because <coughs> um, when I start with a practice exam, I don't know if it's the real exam, but I'm starting at an endpoint, and then I'm going to go work backwards and see what find those topics from the exam on the book itself and see where they are in the book and then study that part of the book. Uh, and then we'll go to another practice exam and see how close we were to the, you know, and start generalizing that way and see how close we are to the real thing. Uh, <clears throat> so this says that, yeah, it says this chapter covers the following exam topics, but if I don't have the exam, the actual exam, I don't, I don't know that for a fact, right? And it's really the exam that's going to um, reflect the the real life situations the closest. Um, uh, so yeah, I want to find this exam right now. Um, I, it could be at the website. Um, I just I've got I've got three hundred ninety one, so I'll just keep going through this and see. Interesting keyword. <coughs> exam blueprint included the word troubleshoot. Previous edition of the CCNA exam blueprint. What does that mean, CCNA exam blueprint? And how fast, right? I'm using that, that algorithm, that way of solving. How fast can I resolve the problem? Let's look for blueprint. What does that mean? It's looking around for it. 200301 CCNA Cisco <coughs> exam topics, online exams. Cisco will require all candidates using the current exams, the following. Uh, okay, so we're getting closer here. CCNA 200301 blueprint, PDF, exam topics, practice exams, mock exam. Past exams, right? Is this an exam? Well, well uh, I'm not sure what the blueprint is. I'm looking for the blueprint. Okay, it doesn't say. Okay, 
You see on Blueprint includes topic configuration, but layer two, either channel. See, now we're seeing what's important, right? Because we're getting closer to exam. That's the terminal point. Uh, it's the point at which after we can conclude this is what was important, right? So when you start out, you're like, the opposite of that is like, we've got all this information, anything could be important, right? So it's after we get past this, then we know, then we know, and that's what saves time, so. Um, do we have the right exam? 203, uh, 203.01 PDF free practice on free CCNA practice exam, latest NC. Exam dumps, 100% pass. Oh. I, if, I don't know what that is, but it's, it's there. Let's see what that that is. <clears throat> I don't know what that means. Hundred percent dumps, real exam dumps. It means these are real old exams. Pass hot, right? <sighs> so basically, I think they're. I don't know. If, that's the problem with stuff that's online it's like you assume that because it's online it's legal um, uh, don't have anything saying you know then it's asking for my whatsapp telegram uh, so I don't want to do that if it's just a download link even download links if you study cybersecurity you know even even a download link um, could be um, a hacker uh, but definitely, if you give a social media account, uh, oof. WhatsApp and Telegram, those are the worst ones, too. So, uh, <clears throat> see, even 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 links can be can be hacks. Um, so, official twelve official practice questions. Uh, Exam dumps. Let's try this one. Assuming that exam dump is uh, exam question verify to enter exam answers. Yeah. Um, let's keep looking for exam blueprint. CCMA exam blueprint. Yeah, I think somebody has been using this. My keyboard. Put in CCNA exam. Uh, okay. I thought I put in blueprint. Uh. What is this? What does this say? Now this is this is exactly the class actually that I'm giving. It's based off. It's called networks, and in fact, let me. <laughs> Just to make sure that um, <sighs> yeah, my classes sound different, but I'm just <laughs> okay. It sounds <clears throat> it could be anything the way it sounds. I just <sighs> but um. Yeah, this gets closer to it, right? Um, but um, network fundamentals, network access, IP connectivity, IP services. Um, um, but um, good to know, but it's not the actual exam. Um, so you can do that right now. Um, good read. And at the, the bottom, Recognize components of JSON encoded data. Everything we're doing is for this. And this JavaScript object, I, uh, JSON encoded data, I know exactly what's happening here uh, because um, the way topics are arranged in academia is the last topics is what's the total purpose, is the goal of the entire topics before it. The topics are building up to the last topic. Which is the you know to understand the last one, which which is the the, the goal of the, the everything they're talking about, why they're talking, why they're talking in the first place. 
So um, if you can visualize it, visualize what's happening here, um, it's like the top-down approach. So the top-down approach is it starts here, this is the top, and then you're working down. You go this way, working uh, down into more details, more and more detail, more and more detail, more detail, more detail about this, about this topic, uh, um, which is, what we already said, is JSON encoded data. Um, and uh, the teacher told me um, that uh, he didn't want just commands because they may not understand, again, the English very well, uh, so to talk more about the topic. So if I was, that's what I would do. So I would, I would recognize what, my, what, the, what we're talking about, uh, what the concept is, <coughs> and then slowly drill down into the details. And that's kind of like, it's also, it's also like uh, backtracking. It's like how to get to this point, backtrack. Backtrack to the start. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, JSON is an open standard text based file format to store and exchange serialized data. Um, the serialization is a process of converting an object into a format that can be stored and transported to later be created. So, this is that's JavaScript. Um, it means, um, however, many other programming languages can interpret and generate JSON data. Um, but uh, the reason why it was originally um, JavaScript is because uh, it was for, you know, for websites, for internet. JavaScript was the, was the uh, <coughs> website language. So when they were transporting things like APIs over, uh, over the internet, um, um, they're using, they're using, uh, they're serializing it. Uh, to use it on different, that means uh, to use it on different platforms, um, on different applications, and because then it will be uh, <coughs> untranslated, the serializing will be untrans by, uh, untranslated by different applications um, <coughs> to be used in that application's native environment. Um, so, the... Uh, <coughs> So that's what's that's what is happening here. Recognize components of JSON encoded data, um, but what? So what is it? Uh, so you're supposed to you're receiving JSON encoded data at the end of all of this. But what is encoded by the JSON? So before that is recognize the capabilities of configuration management mechanisms, uh, Puppet Chef and Ansible. So it could be that Ansible um, is what is serializing or is what is responsible for um, sending that data uh, through the JSON uh, encoded data. Um, so <coughs> Ansible is used as uh, a network management tool that sends uh, the same commands simultaneously to many hundreds of thousands of switches at a time to control those switches at a single time simultaneously. Uh, and so you can imagine that the command Ansible is doing that, sending those commands through the JSON encoded data. Before that, describe characteristics of REST-based APIs, CRUD, HTTP, verbs, and data encoding. So, in this way, um, think that uh, before you uh, before you heard API the REST API, you did not hear about Ansible. It's only after, and that's, you know, that's how you learn here, right? Uh, so before you had the Ansible, you you uh, didn't have it, and you have this situation, the REST-based API, CRUD, HTTP, so on. So <clears throat> why would you have the API before the Ansible? Why would you have the API in the first place? To use, to it is to use Ansible. Um, so if you have an API, then it is to use Ansible. Right, and if you have Ansible, then it is to uh, recognize components of JSON encoded data or send JSON encoded data to put it into JSON encoded data. Um, it could also be to recognize it. Um, so once you have Ansible, so once you have an API, then you can have, then you can use Ansible, right? You implement Ansible, and then you uh, use Ansible to recognize components of JSON encoded data. So there could be different environments on a on a network. Um, and you have hundreds of different environments 
um, but they are all using because they're all using JSON encoded serialization. It's the serialization that allows them to communicate uh, simultaneously with Ansible and take commands from Ansible. <coughs> But before the API, uh, compare traditional campus device management with Cisco DNA Center enable device management. So, well, campus device management. So, um, yeah, one thing I was told here uh, when I came to this uh, job was um, they want uh, some campus management tool or campus uh, design tools. Um, so here it actually says, it calls it uh, by name, uh, compare traditional campus device management with Cisco DNA center enabled device management. So they're saying like, well, you want to use Ansible, but what are you using it on? Uh, what host, right? Um, are you, you know, so basically they're saying that um, your campus, your traditional campus device management is probably not as good as Cisco DNA center. So why don't you look at Cisco DNA center right now and see if you can replace it, if you if you want to use that instead. <clears throat> okay, so that means that we have to go to Cisco DNA Center. And so again, this is just top down view. This is like backtracking. So I mean your forward and backtracking, what's the difference? You're looking from the small to the big, or you're looking from the big to the small. So, um, you know, it's like starting with classical physics and then working down to quantum physics instead of starting with quantum physics and working up to classical physics. I mean, either way, you know, you're learning. You're learning a structure. Um, okay, uh, that's, okay, Catalyst is different, it's not, I'm looking for Cisco DNA Center, and unfortunately, um, my, uh, my, my, my AI chat is not working, my, I think now they call it, uh, uh, Devon or something. Ugh, I, can't remember. I don't think that's just for coding. <sighs> no, like I told them, I'm just an individual. I'm not a business, so I'm using VPN. Because it helps me. Um... <clears throat> Like, right, so if I ask, see if it works. Oh, thank you. Okay, so um, sometimes I can get blessed by God and it actually works. So. <clears throat> Cisco DNA Center uh, is a network management and automation platform uh, that simplifies the management of Cisco networking devices. It provides a single pane of glass for your managing your entire network, from design and deployment to ongoing operations and troubleshooting. Okay, so I don't got to read more, um, but if it can see, it says I can see my entire network. Well, does that mean is that thousands of switches, right? And so then those thousands of switches I'm using, I use. Um, um, Ansible, I access through an API, and I would I would use Cisco DNA Center accessed through an API, okay, uh, with Ansible to get to those switches and send serialized or receive serialized encoded data to manage them. Um, uh, Ah, yeah, okay. Let's keep reading this. Um, see, it's, it's very brief. That's why I like it. See, that's why I like the AI reply. 
Cisco DNA Center offers a number of benefits, including Cisco DNA, simplified network management, improved network automation, enhanced network visibility, increased network security. Cisco DNA Center provides a single point of control for all of your Cisco networking devices, making it easy to manage your network from a single location. See, it provides a single point of control, and it's, it's Ansible doing that, or, or Puppet or Chef, but the best one is Ansible. Improved network automation, Cisco DNA Center can automate a wide range of network tasks, such as device provisioning, configuration, and troubleshooting. So everything that we're learning uh, up to, and, until this point is for this. Um, that's my point. That, uh, <clears throat> um, but, you know, I've said that many times. What I need to, what I need to say, what I need to show and do is what's on the exam. I need to find the exam, which I still haven't done. But, you know, we can, we can just keep doing this. But I, I think once someone knows that what their purpose is, then um, the real proof to other people that we know what we're doing is, you know, you can pass the examination. That's like the last, the last word, right? If you can pass the exam, then you absolutely do know. Um, people cannot question. People can't question, so... Um. Okay, so like I said, I was trying to get closer. So Cisco.com practice exams. That's what I'm looking for. Past real exams, practice exam. Please give me something, right? So it's just practice exams. Cisco exam review, CCNA. Look, eighty dollars. See, have to pay for it. So. Um, they, I, I'm gonna by making this my goal right now is to get some real past exams. Uh, what I'm gonna do right now is actually to go for a walk, and um, I'll have this. Um, I'll, well, I'm just gonna put on pause for you. We'll just be a second, and I'll be back. <laughs> and I'm back after a long trip. I don't know how long that took, but uh, so I decided uh, I went shopping. And uh, I decided, um, as I went for my walk, um, that I am going to uh, <clears throat> use the top-down approach, uh, and uh, instead of focusing on commands, um, this class I am going to um, focus on the overall, um, the overarching uh, architecture of the of this uh, course, of course, that, um, you know, basically the, the, the architecture, the concept architecture, um, and uh, <clears throat> that will, I'll need to get, a, I, I want to get the exams also to um, to confirm that and follow along with it to, to make sure that I'm, I'm paying attention to the, focusing on the right, um, the right ideas and not wasting time. So like I said, I'm looking for the, the exam, uh, Cisco exam review, uh, prepare, uh, prepare to take the exam, uh, on demand against Cisco, I'm still looking for, um, exam, uh, uh, <coughs> um, samples, past exams, uh, CCNA training expectations, CCNA examples. Exam questions. I wonder if this is. If I can get this. But I'm still actually trying to find it. Uh, this is a simulator for the exam, uh, but they're charging hundred dollars a year. Replicates the timing to be guilty, so I think that would guarantee the pass. Um, I wonder if they have the CCMP exam. If they can guarantee I can pass the CCMP, huh, I'd have a job right there. Uh, let's look. 
the ah, and the IE. They guarantee I pass the IE. Oh wow, that software. Let me check this out. Data Center Enterprise Security. This one is very, very popular. Considering how popular. No, no. Do you want a job or do you want? What is this? I.e. Enterprise Infrastructure, Enterprise Wireless. So Enterprise Infrastructure, Enterprise, Enterprise, right? So the I.E. Enterprise something or Enterprise or whatever these, right? Enterprise, of course, right? Because if you're going more professional, saying if you want to get more more professional than CCMP, then you'll go enterprise. Well, if I'm going enterprise, then I might as well go enterprise already first, right? So this is the right way. <coughs> and then, right, CCNA or DevNet Associate, which one? Um, yeah, I don't know what, De what DevNet is, but CCNA is the one that you should get. So this one, then this one, and then whichever one, infrastructure or wireless, um, either sounds fine wireless is uh, people really are trying to go wireless so I'm not sure which one would be a good one let's see what it says like this enterprise oh well, there practice exams here the net sim oh, that's net sim To earn the CCMP Enterprise Credential, you must pass the core exam and the enterprise concentration. Core exam and the enterprise. So the three, three five zero four zero one, enterprise core. Three five zero four zero one, enterprise core. Uh, <coughs> only one. One fee, not to yearly fee. Plus video training, two fifty. It's not that much expensive. Of course, with complete kit for there's with Net Sim and X Sim Max. I don't know what's X X Sim Max, but um, let's see this. Ah, uh, one eighty per year. Sixty dollars per three months. Guarantee. Oh, no guarantee. Let's see. Then have additional resources tomorrow online. I oh, see no guarantee. So that doesn't, does not, uh, oh, it, but that's, uh, I don't know why I went to the CCIE, but let's try the CC, CCIE Enterprise, uh, 35040, did I choose CCIE? I thought I had the CCNP. Same thing, three fifty four oh one CCIE.
what where is the two months you can study this and in two months you have CCNA. That's him. Um, X Sim Max for Cisco. Courseware. Like in my opinion, is this intellectually stimulating? I have to move I have to do fast forward for me because I want to go back to data structures and algorithms. And that's what I I do. That's what I like. Um uh, so this is interesting. Um, oh, there it is, guaranteed, replicates the timing difficulties, so, and that's for the CCNA, um, <clears throat> so I think I'm just going to try to understand the top-down, I'm going to try to read the concept, interpret the concept on the, on the, the, the textbook that I have, the book, and then, um, be happy with that, so, so the CCNA, um, Courseware showed the guarantee. Or was it practice exam? CCNA practice exam. See why I record things so I don't forget yet. Yeah. Guarantee. Okay? So try the CCNP regular practice exam. Does it guarantee? This is the core details. Practice exam guarantee. Holy shit! We guarantee you can pass the real exam. Replicates the timing difficulty for a hundred dollars. Hundred dollars a year. You can you can pass you can take this and they it comes it guarantees. That you'll get your that you'll pass the real test. That's worth it. That is worth it. If you take out of something you really want a job. <clears throat> what is this coming from? Boson. If you can pass the XM Max exam, you can pass the real exam on the first try, guaranteed. If you purchase X10 practice exam product and fail the corresponding certification exam within six months of purchase, follow the instructions for a full refund. It's only $99, it's only $100. What they're telling you is they guarantee you, but you have to pay $1,000 for the the real certificate anyway. And, but if you have it, like you're, you're almost guaranteed 100000 a year um, and they only they're only charging a hundred dollars so and if you like you pay the hundred dollars and you pass the simulation then you know if you pay a thousand dollars you'll pass the real exam and then once you have that you'll get a hundred thousand a year and they're uh, yeah that's the one that is get ready in eight weeks
Uh, yeah, so I mean, so the guarantee is more valuable than the refund, in my opinion. Um, but, I mean, definitely for them to offer a deal like this, it definitely says, it's, it's definitely uh, puts things into perspective. Um, but, um, yeah, so it's, it's I, will, I will keep that in mind. Uh, but, um, like I said, um, I'm working on data structures and algorithms, and I will just go into that. Uh, let me read the, let me go back to the textbook. Um, and um, start um, working with that. Uh, so, let's the switches. Let's talk about that more. Ooh. Also, working on my, uh, where my view is here. Oh, sorry, for those that didn't see me, there I am. <laughs> Alrighty, let's, let's, let's uh, begin, shall we? So, um, so yeah, how are we reading this? Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up is that the, the, um, this book is only volume one, um, you know, of, of volume, uh, two volumes. Uh, so if I'm reading backwards, uh, it's only for the first half of the CCNA, essentially. Um, and plus the <coughs> uh, CCIE, uh, or the CCMP is the um, second uh, step even after the CCNA, so um, in a, in a sense, the um, the uh, volume one CCNA volume one is only um, one third of the entire concept. Uh, um, what was I? <laughs> what was that? Where did we start last time? We were. Reading something about here. Uh, I think so. No. So, a quick review here wireless LANs, IPv6, OSPF. IPv4 routing, IPv4 addressing, implementing VLANs and the STP, implementing Ethernet LANs, uh, intro to networking. So here it's clear for me to see that wireless, um, especially like enterprise wireless uh, devices in wireless setup, uh, in the wireless uh, <coughs> are being accessed through IP addresses uh, with uh, uh, with the uh, with this with the IPv6 and uh, the shortest path uh, is being uh, found um, to those uh, IP addresses that are in the wireless environment. <coughs> IP OSPF is just a policy that uh, a strategy um, to get to each of these uh, IP addresses in the IPv6. And then if someone doesn't know how to think that way, then they can read the other the other way starting from the beginning. Um, with the simplest um, uh, parts uh, to the more advanced parts, the more whole parts. Uh, the more whole concept.
So was I looking here? <laughs> Chapter review. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, I think I was. I was looking at. Uh, this because when I was doing this so <coughs> um, WN configurations this is this is volume one So why am I not seeing the same thing? Uh, I only had this book. Uh, was I on the... Some other part. I'll find my way around here. Chapter... Was, I in was it only chapter 2 and 3 I was over there? I don't think... Uh, I think so. Using the have to place with land. Oh, so I don't know. Um, because I was in volume 2 CCNA, uh, not the volume 1. Um... So I was at the end of that, um, but uh, also the CC and PCCIE. Um, so this is this is the the progression order here, right here. Um, So in fact, so I'll go into, um, we all, I don't really understand um, the CCIE um, yet, um, but you can see here, um, you've got wireless routers, wireless architecture, security, SDN, <coughs> um, then uh, stops. Um, Ansible was a good marker for me uh, for where the CCNA stops. So, <clears throat> as far as concept, uh, so you can see what I've got, I've got in the last chapter here, right? Um, and that's building a wireless LAN. Um, so again, the wireless concept, operating wirelessly, and obviously that's touching devices. It could be something about operating wirelessly, um, and Ansible is involved. Um, but that's at the CCNA level, so then at the higher level, We've got this SDN here, so uh, fast forward. This is the detail right, of that. Uh, so the idea, the point of CCMP is automation. Uh, there's there's Puppet and Chef again, Salt Stack, Ansible, Puppet, Bolt, Salt Stack. So more more automation tools, software tools. Um, so uh, it, and I felt that I felt like that too. I felt the CCIE kind of went into deeper detail on what the last part of the CCNA touched on, and uh, <clears throat> as you see here, it has an, it introduces you 
to the Ansible and PubPunishUp, but then here it introduces you to more software, more automation software. Um, so I, I think that uh, we can look at it more right now, but I think that CCI is, an ex is a more detailed extension of the last part, the latter part of um, CCNA. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is I'll correlate the the detail right here to this latter part. Uh, but I want to scroll through also all of these and make sure that there's uh, that is coherent, uh, coherent and cohesive. There's coherence and cohesion. Uh, so then it, it suggests um, the, the final chapter. This this final chapter. Uh, suggests uh, this didn't suggest the same thing, right? But here in the final chapter, suggesting uh, the prep software, the online prep software, and uh, <coughs> uh, so you've got that, and then you've got the the uh, that software we just looked at um, the uh, that guarantees you pass in in in. Uh, two months or something within six months so uh, you can choose between that or this prep software uh, and I think I, I highly suggest that um, I think that will really work and, and uh, I'm not the only one that thinks it'll work because that's that's why I was suggesting in the last part of this chapter right so um, but as the last part of this chapter it says uh, advice about the exam event. It's talking about the exam. Uh, this is um, this is advice for the CCNA exam. This is advice for the CCNP exam. Uh, Press exams would like to. Uh, and then the last chapter for this. But it, this is this is volume one actually volume two. So this is kind of like the middle of the book. That being said, um, if this is building wireless LAN, then this should leave off, begin where that left off. Um, so it's TCP IP, and then IPv4. Advanced IPv4 <coughs> security architectures. Uh, yeah, security is uh, like cybersecurity. Securing network devices, again, uh, cybersecurity for these devices, for network devices. Uh, Uh, the cybersecurity for switches. Um, uh, DHCP, uh, dynamic host configuration. Switches and routers again. So when I was doing commands in the volume one, it was touching on this. It was talking about this DHCP. Uh, so now it's uh, talking about the DHCP again. <coughs> DHCP security. But uh, a style, the way I like to read is the way I like to try, you know, to read, is doing this backwards. So starting with the big idea, because what it's doing the other way, reading forward is like working up to the big idea of why you're doing all this. Um, so I kind of like, I'm kind of greedy and I just start with why I'm doing this and then I work backwards into the detail. Um, how I'm supposed to <coughs> know that, how I'm supposed to know it. So, uh, 
just as a concept anyway, at first I just want to understand why I'm reading. So, <clears throat> the understanding Ansible, again, we have that understanding Ansible puppet. So let's look at the CCMP uh, automation. Uh, uh, so we've got the puppet chef and, and salt stack here, agent and server mode, agentless automation, Ansible, uh, puppet bolt salt stack. Uh, so, salt stack may be better than Ansible, and we can look into that here. Um, like if I ask, I don't know if I have Bard. But, oh, sorry, we've got I've got Gemini right here. So, um, is salt stack superior to Ansible? No quick cut answer, so they both excel in infrastructure automation, configuration, management, that just um, uh, But I think the answer is probably yeah. Salt stick advantages, speed and scalability, utilizes zero MQ messaging and faster synchronous communication, making it ideal for large deployments. So it's always what's better is always what's larger uh, and obviously faster and easier to use. Uh, Event driven architecture responds well to you dynamic environments where systems frequently change, it offers secure data storage for sensitive information within templates and states. Ansible leverages YAML syntax considered easier to learn and write compared to salt stack. Uh, agentless, um, no need to install additional software or manage devices, potentially reducing complexity, a large community and integrations, benefits from a wider user base and more readily available integration. So the more professional tool is salt stack. Um, two reasons why because it has a larger developer base it has a larger community uh, that means more people are using it and um, uh, oh sorry <laughs> Ansible Ansible is the larger community um, uh, agentless <clears throat> okay so Ansible is easier to learn and write and has a larger community. Uh, Salt Stack is has scale, speed and scalability on its side. Um, it can handle larger deployments, and it's more secure. So it's it's more scalable and more secure. So uh, Salt Stack is probably more professional, the the more professional one. Um, but uh, Ansible is easier, uh, simpler, and uh, more people are using it. So, uh, Salt Stack is the is the more professional, bigger one. And uh, we we'll just look what it, um, is Salt Stack. Uh, also Python based, open source, Python based and open source uh, for event driven IT automation, remote task execution, configure management. So this one is this one is uh, and, and by the way, so salt stack would be a CCNP level um, DevOps software uh, or DevOps application, DevOps app, and uh, Ansible would be a CCNA level DevOps app. Both doing the same thing, but Salt Stack being the more professional one. Is that that's exactly what it said. To. So, um, Salt Stack and to what is Salt? Uh, not Salt the movie, not Salt Hollywood from Hollywood, right? But Salt Stack from Wiki, please. From drum roll, developer VMware. Author Salt is Tom's S Hatch. People created several utilities. Hatch decided to use the zero MQ messaging. Uh, 
stores all theories stay gay inside and easily understood data structures that love just YAML while experience mental uh, and experimental functionality assault system was available it was not considered stable uh, inside an easily understood data structure that level leverages YAML that sounds very much like Ansible so um Salt Cloud support 25 public and private cloud systems, including AWS, Azure, VMware, IBM Cloud, OpenStack. Salt Cloud provides an interface for Salt to interact with cloud hosts and the clouds that functionality, such as DNS, storage, load balancers, etc. So Salt Stack can manipulate clouds like AWS, cloud infrastructure, physical cloud infrastructure, like that uh, is... Uh, <coughs> that AWS Azure uh, would have. <laughs> Salt was designed to be high, highly modular and easily extensible to make it uh, easy to mold into diverse enterprise IT use cases. Uh, yeah, so that's definitely anything, you know, like even AWS itself, I'm not sure, you know, like even Amazon itself, I'm not sure. Or Microsoft itself using Azure, uh, you know, their data centers, they have to use something, so are they using salt? Uh, but this seems to be the most professional uh, thing to use, um, available uh, to Cisco um, experts. <coughs> um, Internetwork experts, CCIE. Um, now, this guy, Thomas Hatch, the author of Salt, Thomas Hatch, VMware. Thank you, Wikipedia. Uh, YAML, Thomas Hatch. So, this could be him, and he's also an ex. Is that him? Author of Salt. Um, definitely want to... He's got 119 following. He's got 1.6 thousand followers. Don't know why nobody's following him, but I like to know what he's doing. Um, salt Stack is his website. GitHub Salt Stack. And if it's public, then... You should. That's my. That's my motto. If it's public, then I should connect. Salt Lake City, Utah, the home of the Mormons, the Mormon people, uh, and uh, the largest data repository in the in the in the, the United States. I think also. Um, <clears throat> That's why they say that uh, Utah uh, Mormons know everything <laughs> because they have a data center where they store all the all the data that's ever happened. Anyway, they store. I don't know if Mormons do, but they store it in Utah. Nineteen seven one six three. So I've heard that joke before. Um, um, but anyway, point point being, learn salt stack ASAP as soon as possible. Uh, that's the point. What should you be spending your time on? Here, I just um, I just want to fork it.
capacity or evacuated been increasing a little bit. Um, yeah, fork. Uh, there we go. Fork, the uh, salt fork. <laughs> so people see my forks, they're like, oh, he knows that at least, right? Um, so, yeah. Should you know salt? Yes. Thomas Hatch is in Python developers community. Oh my god. Maybe you'll see me write something. Anyway, he... So, someone had to develop for it, right? And he's, he's, he doesn't look very... I mean, uh, he, someone had to develop salt. Salt and fork. <laughs> but, uh... uh am I following him? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> give me, give me alerts to me. That's something. He's from Utah. Yeah, he, he he's from Utah. He looks like a Mormon. Uh, you know what? I should have read more about him. It's that's my bad. education and experience. But look how young he looks. I'm gonna find out his age. So Enterprise IT, this is definitely, this definitely is this right here. This is all saying SSH. Studies career writing, software orchestrating, anonymity, and this is all open source too. So like whatever he's doing, whatever he wrote, it's open source. All right, there's no there's no secrets here. The best stuff is not secret. It's not a secret. He has spent his career writing software to orchestrate. At least that's what I think. That's what we think. People like they think. If some people think that oh the best secrets are do well, that's a different field, it's a different industry, and uh, that's not what I deal with. <clears throat> Automated secure IT environments for the U.S. Uh, intelligence community. This is public information. Uh, decades of experience implementing global infrastructures. For the largest businesses in the world, Thomas knowledge and hands-on with dozens of new and old infrastructure management technology has established the vision, the vision of SolidStack. He has shared his knowledge of IT security and management automation with tens of thousands of practitioners at more than 100 industry events. Thomas and SolidStack have been recognized with numerous awards ranging from open source, yeah, that's it, right, open source community growth to innovation, automation, and cybersecurity. For his work on Salt, uh, so anyone can know. The, the source code for salt stack because it's open source and uh, it can be peer reviewed anybody can work on it um, and uh, they can get started and working on it. that's probably what the github repository is this github repository is probably uh, for everyone to work on it uh, it's written in python so that's it's very accessible it's a new language so Salt Stack recognized numerous awards for being growth, innovation, and uh, automation, cybersecurity. For his work in Salt, 2012, Tom received the Black Duck Rookie of the Year award and was named to the GitHub Octoverse list in 2012 and 2013 for leading a project with the highest number of unique contributors. See, leading a project with the highest number of unique contributors. So, a lot of people know this, and they're they're doing it. Um, Rubbing shoulders, projects from Android, Mozilla, and OpenStack. More recently, SolidStack SecOps was chosen by CSO Magazine as one of the hottest new products. Are. But the question is, like, is this guy does this guy consider himself a network engineer? I don't think so. I think he considers himself a, a software engineer. Um, he's a distinguished engineer at Broadcom. Broadcom Software. 
that's a whole different thing. Um, so, okay, so Broadcom Software, Draper, Utah, Leahy, Utah, Senior Staff Engineer, Founder, CTO, Salt Stack, Greater Lake, Salt Lake. So he's always lived in Salt Lake. He's from Utah, Salt Lake City, Principal Architect, um, Private Cloud Infrastructures, uh, one of the world's most widely used configuration management automation platforms, raised capital and built up a viable, fast-growing company. Uh, this is really cool, right? Okay, so this is like his resume anyway. Uh, Software, there is right there, software slash IT engineers. Uh, cloud computing plus. So it sounds like software for, uh, <coughs> software for networks, but uh, here's a system, a system administrator. Uh, that doesn't sound interesting. Linux, Fedora Koji is Linux. Linux systems, SE Linux. Uh, Guru Labs, class covering numerous Linux again. Uh, so here he's in here it's network um, this is all network this is not software algorithms CEO source disk uh, established initial companies is tuned to operations completely with higher volumes create small brokerage programs to drive business design all marketing sales and uh, this is not even software it doesn't even look tech related I have no idea what this is designed to all marketing sales media. This sounds like he's not even in tech right here. Um, he's in brokering, he's in sales or something, but there is no, okay. Uh, and that was 2005, that was very, and there's, uh, can't find, I don't can't find anything about source disk. It's not even a city. Guru Labs. Okay, that this obviously was a company or something that he tried to start. Top classes covering numerous Linux. So then he went into Guru Labs. That sounds like he tried to start his own company. Then he tried to become a teacher. Tried to get a, tra a trainer job at Utah. Okay, he's in Utah. Uh, Linux provider, Linux educator. So I don't know if he's in Linux at this point. But he's in he's in Linux as a trainer. He gets a job as a trainer teaching Linux, and then from there he gets a, a job using Linux using Fedora Koji, and then um, he's working on bigger Linux systems, cloud computing, which is cloud computing, um, and this all happens like within a year, like year after year. Uh, this sounds like he's writing scripts in Python. Um, sounds like he's writing simple scripts in Python or something uh, for enterprise. Uh, <coughs> level Linux networks. And he's using these different softwares like Puppet because Puppet, well, well he's not using Ansible, uh, but Puppet is better than Chef. Um, so then again, you see Puppet here. Uh, and uh, so he's he's getting into, he gets into scripting software and using using it that's like automation the automation uh, network software uh, and then he 
gets into a more serious role for that. Leverage technologies for com cloud computing and development, including not limited to. So, more serious professional role with that. Um, still in cloud computing, again, in cloud computing, so expanding the enterprise size. <coughs> Dev, so DevOps and cloud DevOps. Puppet, again, salt. Um, and he didn't say he made salt here. But after he started using salt here at Beyond Oblivion, Oblivion, Beyond Oblivion, Maybe I can teach her, start teaching her. Um, uh, careers. Training centers and instructors can become a guru last partner. I use Google Labs, things, course for links, course titles. Uh, yeah, well, this would be a place to start, right? Because if the CCIE will get you a job, then maybe this could, <laughs> maybe I could start teaching here and do the same. Oh, they tell me there's no jobs, no listings. They had partners, so I think they have careers. No, no, no. So what's going on with that? Let's see what the history is. Utah. I got a number. Deployed Linux. Google Labs training. Deploying Linux. Year anniversary. Linux Training Center. Does not say who the founders were. Um. Taught and consulted at Red Hat. <laughs> all of Red Hat Linux's instructors ranked among the highest trainers for all of Red Hat Linux. So Red Hat Linux is enterprise with support. Fedora Koji. <sighs> Is what? What is door code? Door's RPM built. <coughs> Introduced a specialized development to production procedure with the door code. It's misspelled specialized. Greatly hardened Linux systems with SE Linux and advanced IP tables rules. They so worked on improving Linux. Red Hat. 
Red Hat trained, administered Red Hat certification exams, administered Red Hat. So Red Hat Enterprise, right, with support. You get paid to do that. I don't know if Guru Labs... It doesn't sound like he started it. It sounds like he worked for them. So I was trying to find his Guru... Was Guru Labs his? No? Um, doesn't look like it, though. Uh, but if you want a job from them, there's no jobs. So call them and see what they suggest in getting a trainer a, a job to train. Work as a trainer teaching... Red Hat Linux, Enterprise Linux, paid Enterprise Linux. So why is it good? Why is that good? Because Red Hat is the one of the, the only Linux that people charge for. <clears throat> I mean, are, are charged for to use because the customer service, the comfort customer service. Um, so if you can get into that as a job, that would be good. Um, <clears throat> So he did that for some time and then went into sysadmin, uh, worked on improving Linux. Uh, then he went into cloud, enterprise, larger cloud applications, improving Linux more. So he's really not a software engineer. He didn't start off as a software engineer. He started off as a this network engineer. Um, <clears throat> probably learned some like it says right here learned some Python and Ruby and Bash so he learned some simple programming for but for Linux uh, Enterprise um, continued with that with Salt and <clears throat> Salt uh <clears throat> Salt. What I'm, the point I'm trying to get at is that here's the, he's the founder of Salt Stack, not the founder of Salt. So, well, it does. It, it says Salt Stack here. So Salt sometimes referred to as Salt Stack. It's Python. Okay. So I get the Salt is Salt Stack. So if so, at this point, at this point, puppet Salt, then he made it he made salt at this point and then he decided that since he made salt he's going to start his own company salt stack initial release 2011 2011 founder 2011 he started his company when he released the software he was making the software in 2009 at this point, he's not. Or he may have been. He may have been making it throughout this time, and then officially came out with it at this point. Was official at this point. Twenty ten. <clears throat> A year later, Salt Stack. Um, so he's doing these things, and then he's making the software to do what he was doing as well. Uh, Improved version of what he was doing. So, uh, the important point is what is Salt Stack? How does it work? It's open source, Python based open source for event driven IT automation, remote task execution and configuration, ex remote task execution and configuration management. That's it right there. It's uh, like Ansible. Event driven IT automation remote task. Supporting infrastructure as code, approach to data center, system and network deployment and management, configuration, automa automation, SecOps, orchestration, vulnerability, remediation, and hybrid, hybrid cloud control. So, all these things that they needed to do on Linux, he was making Salt for that. And Cisco determined that Salt stack is better than uh, Ansible. So I can ask, why is salt stack? Oh, let me do this. Why? 
Why does Cisco think Salt Stack is better than Ansible? There's no official statement, but if I was an AI brain and I had to think for myself, then I would say... <laughs> Cisco DNA Center, of course. Cisco wants you to use the DNA Center. Um, probably see that up here somewhere. Uh, let's check. There it is, Cisco DNA Center API. Last mention. Chapter 28. Whoa, that's a lot. It's everywhere. I want you. We want you to use it. Chapter 27. Chapter 27. Cisco DNA Center provides the DNF management and NFE orchestration capabilities so allows for easy automation and deployment of virtualized networks. So it says, over Ansible for automation tasks within Cisco DNA Center. Both tools have their merits, and Cisco DNA Center likely offers compatible compatibility with either depending on your specific requirements. Here's a breakdown uh, why Cisco might find value in either option. Um, this book says that the, uh, 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 the last word is salt stack. So salt stack is preferred in the DNA Center, Cisco DNA Center. Uh, reason Cisco might prefer SaltStack, reason Cisco might prefer Ansible, finding the right fit. It's more likely Cisco DNA Center offers compatibility with both SaltStack and Ansible, allowing you to choose based on your network specific needs. Consider factors like network size, if there's factors like size, security requirements. So, again, scaling up. How did Thomas get to the point he's at from scaling up? And he probably realized SaltStack didn't exist. Ansible existed um, when SaltStack did not exist. And so Thomas realized so that uh, a, a larger scale a scaling app needed to exist. And that's why he made SaltStack and why SaltStack is superior to uh, Ansible for scaling. Yeah, so for the very large, the largest enterprises, I would expect SaltStack, not Ansible. Cisco DNA Center offers compatibility with SaltStack, Ansible, allowing you to choose based on your network's you should consider factors like uh, security requirements and your team's existing skill set. Okay, so uh, Cisco might prefer SaltStack, large scale network management, security focus. Reason Cisco might prefer Ansible integration with existing Cisco tools usability for Cisco so it's it's older and easier to use Ansible right older and easier to use Salt Stack it's uh, it can uh, use larger networks um, it can uh, manage larger networks and it has better security that's an exact reason why Thomas would would make something right um, because uh, <coughs> scalability and security more scalability and security. Excellent. Um, now, that actually, what I read is that, that exists inside the Cisco DNA Center. Uh, and so, <coughs> Solid Stack is ever expanding, but in the DNA Center. Uh, so, I don't really know what a Cisco DNA Center Why does the salt stack exist in it? <sighs> hmm. 
Yeah, Cisco DNA Center automates more. Obviously, you can very easily recognize the the new um, smart switches and routers, um, which <clears throat> you know are probably also made by Cisco in a large part. And so it works very well. It's designed f specifically for Cisco switches and routers. Uh, uh. Okay. So salt stack is not in the Asian. So it says, some, okay, so salt stack, these are supplements, these are auxiliary uh, tools that can benefit, that can help the DNA center uh, very rapidly, faster than sometimes the DNA center can do things. Uh, so, uh, and, and salt stack would be the better, the better tool for that to help the Cisco DNA center. Complementary tool for specific network automation tests. No, and, and so it says consider factors like network size. Um, so if you have a very small network, then salt stack is obviously is overkill. Could be, could be, uh, but if you have a very extremely large size enterprise, then salt stack is the first hit. Um, but again, it's just a complementary tool on uh, uh, for the Cisco DNA center. Um, <coughs> That's clear. So Cisco DNA Center actually might not work very well for with other um, I mean, as far as recognizing other devices, but the the salt stack may have a better chance at doing that, uh, recognizing non Cisco devices. Like it says. Cisco DNA Center is a network management platform designed specifically for uh, Cisco networking devices. Provide Center Hub to manage your Cisco network offering features like, so why is it Cisco network? Because if you're using exclusively, if you're exclusively using Cisco devices, this is a good idea. Then Cisco DNA Center is a good idea. Um, and so that's actually, you know, I think they assume that by a person getting a CCIE, or CCMP or CCNA that they're ad admitting to uh, <coughs> getting personal, uh, I mean, uh, uh, getting a, a specific network, uh, a Cisco specific network. Um, <coughs> they're buying into that. I think installed stack as a Swiss Army knife versatile tool for various ID infrastructure needs. The Cisco DNA Center, on the other hand, is like a specialized screwdriver, specifically designed for working with Cisco devices. Exactly. 
so this this whole CCNA certification actually is like is best if you want to work with Cisco devices. I mean, it's the main thing though. They are the main devices. But this is definitely a good thing to have. Soul Stick is definitely a good thing to have. In case you're not in those uh, Cisco-centric uh, environments, networks. See, if you manage multi-vendor network with Cisco devices as a part, then salt stack might be better. If you exclusively use Cisco devices and prioritize these, then uh, then uh, Cisco DNA Center is the way to go. So if they say, you know, I mean, it will be known I mean, because something's exclusive, then they'll know, like, hey, you know, why is it exclusive? Because we just want to use the Cisco DNA Center. Um, but m more of the time, probably, it probably is uh, this situation. Networks are this situation. So, um, that in that case, then salt stack is the choice. is is the good choice. So, <coughs> again, it is a very good idea, and that's why the book leaves salt stack as the last choice. Um, so, anyway, good. It's a good thing for him. Uh, it's a good thing for this guy, um, founder, CTO, distinguished engineer, in Broadcom, so in Broadcom Software, VMware, senior staff engineer. So he worked at. VMware, which uh, we know that um, I think this is VMware. Uh, no, that's uh, that's that's Cisco uh, Virtual Box, but I have VMware too. So VMware is used uh, to yeah run the Linux um, <coughs> and other uh, virtual environments, operating systems. Um, so he worked at VMware. Um, he was a director, senior and director. And uh, Broadcom is uh, American global supplier of semiconductor infrastructure software products, offering offering serve data center, networking software, broadband, wireless storage, and industrial markets. Some kind of network manufacturer. Yeah, North San Jose, Broadcom, North San Jose. That's where I'm from. Um, now, all these places I should be working, but um, maybe I'll be walking on the sidewalk a lot from now on around there, <laughs> thinking of why I am not working inside the building, inside the office somewhere. Uh, <clears throat> haven't been able to. Broadcom announced an agreement to acquire VMware and cash in stock. Oh, so that's why he was working at Broadcom, because... He went from VMware to Broadcom because Broadcom bought VMware. So that was 20, 23, 2023, November 22, 2023, no, no, May 22 to November 22. Oh, look, November 23. So he was there when VMware was bought, and when he was bought, he was made a distinguished engineer. He's still in Utah, which means he's he's remote. He's commuting. He's a remote worker. Um, uh, so VMware no longer exists. Um, so it's a semiconductor process division of Hewlett Packard. Uh, Hewlett Packard doesn't it's not even there anymore either. So Broadcom is a spinoff of HP Hewlett Packard. So HP was replaced by we know who Grimes' boyfriend. I mean, not husband. Grimes' husband. Uh, <clears throat> Global MBA. <laughs> okay. uh, <clears throat> so, 
Yeah, sure. I'll, uh, oh, yeah, it's an education. You can get to that. So, uh, the education, Southern Utah University, what, what, bachelor's degree, master's degree, what, electrical engineering, where? Licenses and certifications, Red Hat Certified Engineer. So, in 2008, Red Hat Certified Engineer expired in 2014. Never renewed it. Um, so, yeah, this is the question to all the disbelievers. I have said many times, if you get to CCIE or the CCMP, you would be employed and you'd make a lot of money. This person, all he did was get a Red Hat Certified Engineer and look what happened to him. He went straight through the roof. He became one of the one of the uh, uh, developers and suppliers of the software that the that the CCIE is using. Um, so, you know, that's that's proof. You can say it was him, or you can say that he's not saying if if he has a degree, and but he is saying that he has a, a certification. A Red Hat cert as a Red Hat certified engineer. <laughs> I mean, you think this guy's not worth with the how? Who knows how much money? Millions, tens of millions. Oh, there it is. His interest is Mormon. I told you he looks like a Mormon. I told you he looks like a Mormon. Um, he wrote this book, though. Salt Essentials. Might be interested in it. Let's see. Salt Essentials. Thomas Hatch. This is a, this is worth reading. Um, complete Intro to Salt. The Wiley's Python-based configuration management. Now, again, so I I love data structures and algorithms. DSA for Python. And you think that would pay off? Look, look at this right here. The salt is written in Python, right? So, again, score number two. So he was working. He he was working with uh, uh, Linux, learned some Python, and wrote Salt, and it became an extremely valuable tool for uh, his uh, network engineering things. I mean that that should scare you, um, because uh, if you are learning DSA for Python and not network engineering, you're on the right path. You're on a better path than than he is, or was when he started this. To, I mean, it depends, like, I mean, are, are you uh, network-centric? <laughs> you just love networks, too. I don't. I, I just love AI. So I'm in a different field. I feel I'm on the, on the, on the Python, but I'm in, I'm in AI. So this is an interesting twist. They're always talking about foreign influence. You know, worried about, worried about foreign influence, <clears throat> whatever. But uh, Mr. Thomas... Uh, the creator of SaltStack, founder of SaltStack, uh, is, uh, was bought by Broadcom, uh, but the owner of Broadcom, well, he worked for VMware, and then th that was bought by Broadcom, so he works, um, under Broadcom. It's interesting that the VMware, um, yeah, is, is owned by Broadcom, but Broadcom used to be, Broadcom was bought by Avago, um, which was a Singaporean company, um, <clears throat> uh, and actually the, um, the CEO, uh, is, uh, uh, Malaysian-born, uh, Chinese-American, I think it said, um, but, uh, he's, a, <clears throat> he has a very strong background that he graduated, uh, 
He has a bachelor's and master's from MIT and an MBA from Harvard. So he's like <clears throat> at the top, just does what he wants. Um, and uh, this is what he wanted to do, I think. Um, so whatever, he, he's a very uh, distinguished person. Um, but uh, that is uh, that is what we're dealing with, with the uh, who actually owns... Uh, um, uh, the company that acquired that that uh, uh, Mr. Thomas, the founder of SaltStack, is working under. So essentially, uh, the founder of SaltStack, uh, which is the recommended uh, app to use here, um, is working under this person, um, Hawk Tan, uh, who, which is a former Singaporean owned. Have a go. What I keep forgetting, I told myself that I would do, is that whenever I have a, whenever I'm thinking of something, I'm going to make a slide. I'll make a slide for it. Um, and, you know, if I had made a slide for all, for everything that I thought, you know, I, I'd have a full PPT right now, a full presentation. Um, and, uh, anyway. And so that's one habit I'm trying to uh, correct. But it really is a lack of productivity. Um, and uh, yeah, I need, I need to stop doing that bad habit. You know, so I was told. Uh, I was just told today that VPN is illegal in China. Um, I'm like, you can't use it. I was like, what? What do you mean I can't use it? I can't make PPT if I don't use it. Like, I mean, do you want me to find out this stuff or not? What, what, what they forgot to say was... Um, that for individual, for it's they're talking about business use for individual use. Uh, I think it's okay uh, because it's not okay for business use if I if it's international business. If the BPN is being used to conduct international business, then it's it's uh, it's it's illegal and severely punishable. But uh, from what I saw, but if it's Uh, but since I do not have any overseas customers, I'm not serving any overseas customers, then um, it's individual, I, and I'm using it just for individual access, um, then from what I read, that's okay. Uh, if I read that it was not okay, then I would not, then, yeah, it wouldn't be good. Uh, <clears throat> that's unfortunate. It's, uh, it, it is too much of, um, a bad situation, um, a tight situation. Uh, just, I think, why, even though the economy is, is very good in, uh, in China, comparatively speaking, um, uh, <clears throat> Elon Musk doesn't spend a lot of time here, uh, if any. <laughs> I'm not sure how much time I'm sure he. I mean, he has factories here, so I think he probably does fly in and out. I'm just guessing because he has business here. Anyone that has business, anyone he has his own private jet. So those billionaires, they love to <coughs> stay in their jets long amounts of time I never imagined a you know it's like a good question I mean do private jets actually are tri pri private jets actually transoceanic I didn't uh, didn't know that no, I think what I was trying to do is to make sure I got 
um, make sure I got uh, so what does that mean? enabling AI especially. of course everyone's enabling AI right yeah. no, uh, <clears throat> I am 100% pro AI so I'm probably one of the most pro AI people uh, that you will meet in the past and future in the short past and future yeah. because if it was just because distance of time is relative yeah. so one rule above them all to mess them all maybe the damn PPT. When you have a thought that you wish you said in class, put it on the PPT. Put it on the PPT. How many times have you had a thought and you said that would have been good in class, a good idea in class? But instead, I just have an empty row of PPTs. Each of those PPTs are topics that the student. Uh, would have been could have been valuable for the student, um, and each of those PPTs reflects the thought that the teacher had. Um, so, um, no, there's a lot of information out there. I mean, so gotta stay focused. There's nothing worse than getting focused, and then all the ideas you got from that. Having your mind start to with all these ideas from being focused, getting focused, and then just like losing them, not writing, not not putting down ideas. I can do something you can't do, says Solstack to Ansible. She's featuring his uh, scalable enough to manage tens of thousands of servers, right? Um, probably scalability is what he's featuring here. I mean, Ansible can do this fast enough to communicate with each system in seconds. Well, I'm supposed to do that. What do you what do you think simultaneous management is? So assuming that Ansible can do that, um, the feature then of this product is a uh, higher scalability, more vast scalability than Ansible. Ansible is also written in Python, so um, uh, Mr. Thomas uh, writing a salt stack definitely tried to outperform Ansible, I believe. Uh, is Ansible open source? It's a good question. Uh, boom, there it is. So Mr. Thomas had full access because it's open source to Ansible. So one could repeat the process, um, well, how do you say... Uh, uh, complement the process and just do the same thing that uh, that Thomas did with Ansible and do it with SaltStack. Um, <clears throat> it's open source, so he, you know Thomas is expecting that too. He's he's waiting for a competitor, uh, but nobody's done it yet. So it's one of the largest open source projects in the world, but not it's still not one of the best performing. How does that work? Um, Kind of fishy. That's kind of fishy. If this is good question, I want to ask you. Despite Ansible's having one of the largest open source networks in the world, open source projects in the world. Sorry, being one of the biggest open source projects in the world. Um, SaltStack is still more scalable, more preferred for very large networks. Uh, crazy. And security. Scalability, security, 
I have, blows my mind. How is that? How is that possible? And they're both open source. There should be some competition. There should be fierce competition here, and there's there's not. I like agentless more. I don't like server client master minion. I don't like master minion. I have to know what zero MQ messaging is, and that's exactly what I thought. The underlying architecture um, is uh, community doesn't equal speed. A large developer community doesn't directly translate to faster execution speed. The underlying architecture and communication methods play a significant role. The underlying architecture and communication methods. So the underlying architecture. So SolidStack probably saw that that uh, Thomas probably saw that uh, Ansible invested was already invested into a type of architecture and wasn't going to change that fundamentally. So he created SaltStack, which had the ability to outperform Ansible's underlying architecture. And and uh, that's what's going on. So Ansible's carrying around a larger community, but uh, they're not able to... They have some, some drawbacks in the architecture so uh, that they're not able to change. Um, without changing Ansible completely. But, um, yeah, they're, they're not going to do that. There's probably some agreement or just not possible to um, change the architecture. So what this means is that someone will have to find a faster architecture than salt stack. Until that happens, a uh, salt stack will... Be, uh, the, be preferred by uh, Cisco. Um, so if you're not using, especially if you're not using Cisco devices, Cisco would suggest using um, SaltStack. So in my opinion, these are just like regular things that can be done writing an algorithm in Python. Um, so, um, yeah, I think that's what he was doing, was just using Python to write... Uh, uh, write an application that did things that Ansible um, wasn't. Um, but good question. I mean, why hasn't? Why didn't someone else do that? I mean, Thomas obviously is uh, <coughs> brighter than a lot of people that are on the Ansible community. So at this point, I'm deciding: do I either do I want to? <coughs> there's two ways I can go. With this is either. Uh, <coughs> Uh, keep exploring past salt stack um, and what that activity is doing or um, before um, explore the activity before salt stack uh, which would be the rest of the uh, CCNP and the CCNA um, and uh, that choice is relative to um, the class uh, Mr. Wayne's class um, and uh, if I look at what the class is called, I still have practically uh, a very little idea <laughs> if, if uh, I'm making the right decision, whichever is the right decision. Um, but I think um, keep it simple is probably probably um, probably better. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so that would be just stay with the uh, just review uh, what's before salt stack, not what's after it, um, and uh, do it in a um, <clears throat> conceptual way. Um, um, so anyway, if you look at the this example with the class, the title of the class. Um, It's called formation management and maintenance. Form of land. Land formation, land management, and land 
maintenance. But I think that it's Cisco software that they're using, in, in, and to be exact, the Cisco Packet Tracer. That So that is, what that means is it's Cisco-specific technology, and if, um, I think it's a, one question is also um, to Gemini, Bard, I mean, uh, Gemini, excuse me, um, how is Cisco Packet Tracer and DNA Center related? And then look for where is a Cisco Packet Tracer in? Well, I know it'll be tested on the DNA Center. We already have that right there. Right? This is uh, Cisco specific technology for the Cisco certificate. Uh, so Cisco Packet Tracer um, is in. Why prefer Cisco VMware? There's two virtual. There are two virtual machines. One from Cisco and one from VMware, which is Broadcom. So one from Broadcom and one from whoever's parent company is Broadcom. Whose parent company is Cisco? I think it's just Cisco. So Broadcom and Cisco. These are the two VMs that are usually being used, typically being used. And Broadcom is Abaco, so formerly Abigail. Cisco Packet Tracer is not in there. Let's see if it's in here. And let's just put Packet Tracer. Packet plenty of times. There it is. Packet Tracer for free. Volume 1, uh, Volume 2. And Packet Tracer is in there. It is there. Okay, let's take this one. Packet Tracer. I guess it's not going to take Let's see if it's in here. Go, 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 Speed Racer. Go. No, Speed Racer. No, Speed Racer. No, watch, no. No, 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 no. Ah. Not a single one. Not a single time. So that means is... CCMP is a Cisco packet tracer is CCNA level, which means that it's amateur level. CAA stands for amateur. So I'm just kidding. It stands for associate. But um, um, at this level, this is the easy level. Um, the pro level, that's why it's called P Pro, uh, is here, and the packet tracer is not there. So. The packet tracer is not for pros. It's it's an amateur tool. It's not a pro tool. It's to learn. It's for newbies to learn. It's the amateur. It's an amateur sim simulation software. Yeah. As for how DNA Center and packet tracer is related, see, books are books are. That's why I love books because they're very well designed. They're very meticulously thought. Out and about, but out, thought about and out. I don't know which letter. So, um, oh, I don't know why I did that. Uh, so, in volume one, it's mentioned a few times. Volume two, CCA volume one, CCA two, it's mentioned 137 times. It hits right at the end of volume two. And then in CCMP, it's mentioned more times, uh, around 160, 160 times, 159. So you can see very clearly it's leveraging in, into it, it's leaning into it. Um, uh, and so Packet Tracer is only mentioned a few times, actually like five or seven times in, in volume one and two, CCMA volume one and two. So, so packet tracer is. Um, we don't need to know it as much as as DNA center. 
Um, it's it's a lean in. It's probably an intro to DNA Center, and we should definitely be into DNA Center before uh, by the finish of CCNA, even in CCNA. And by CCMP, we should be halfway through being used to it and into it. Um, and there's no mention of packet tracer here, so it's fully CC DNA center here. So, uh, um, yeah, DNA center, um, data sheet, um, user guide. If there is a sim to uh, a sim app, a simulation app to learn DNA Center, then I would prefer that over Packet Tracer. Get started on that. And this says, in that sense, what is the difference here? Packet Tracer, DNA Center. Packet Tracer is a network simulation tool. DNA Center is a network management platform, real world Cisco networks. Um, so this is the real tool, DNA. Um, and uh, what other tool could you use? Oh, that's right. Salt stack. Well, I'd like to see more of this control tower. Right. This is, uh, what? Cisco DNA Center, on the other hand, is like the control tower for your actual network. Cool. So you've got, you've got the flight simulator for the network engineers. Flight simulator, Cisco packet tracer, and then the actual control tower, tower Cisco DNA center. So, uh, okay, so we'll take a look at the actual control center, control tower. Okay, so we're gonna be going to the data center more. So, um, I'm sorry, um, Cisco DNA center, DNA center. Sorry, um, let's forget about salt stack right now and. Um, I want to see more Cisco DNA Center um, pictures. What does this thing look at? Can we get something? Cisco DNA Center and device. Introduction of Cisco DNA Center. It wouldn't it be nice to have something that shows us around DNA Center. A video or an interactive tutorial. It's interactive. Interactive tutorial. Interactive help change walkthroughs. Oh, PDF is not gonna get me there. <laughs> Sorry, PDF's not gonna do it.
better get with the game, better get ahead, the edge. So it's nice to see a tutorial of that. Um, we need to see it because we need to study it, but we don't necessarily need to use it. Um, even, in fact, if we do use it, it is uh, it probably doesn't have simulation. Um, if, if it does, then we'll use it. Uh, but if it doesn't, then then we won't. Um, at least we will not be using it with networks. Uh, we'll just use. Um, will study it, its parts, or training videos, etc. So it says it right here. Um, Packet Tracer lays a foundation, um, but like I said, one in seven mentions in volume one and two, and uh, sorry, did I say one in seven? Seven mentions in volume one, seven mentions in volume two, 137 mentions for DNA tracer, DNA center in volume two, 150 mentions in CCNP. So, uh, <laughs> That's an understatement. Uh, um, uh, packet tracer lays a foundation. <laughs> it's not even, that's a total understatement. It's like an intro. <laughs> Probably. I've used Packet Tracer, but I have not used DNA Center, so this is very important. We should, I, I want to find the materials to start looking at it. Right here, let's see. Network automation. DNA Center excels in automating network tasks. You might need to understand scripting languages or tools used for automation within DNA Center. Scripting language, that's Python. And this is, I think, this is where Thomas was when he started thinking of Solve Stack. He was probably using Ansible here, Puppet, and Ansible. And I think he didn't even mention Ansible, so I think he tried to make it look like Oh, he was optimizing Puppet or something. No, Ansible was the competitor. And um, even though he didn't say it, um, so he's hiding that. And uh, so he probably he probably doesn't want people to know that he copied or got the idea for Salt Stack from from Ansible, and because Ansible's written in Python too, as well. Um, and this looks like I think this is where where Thomas started coming up with the idea of salt stack, probably working with DNA Center, working with Ansible, Puppet and Ansible, and then said, you know what, uh, I'm gonna get into Python, the scripting language, and uh, make my own tools and uh, for the network automation and uh, for DNA Center, but also for for other things um, outside of DNA Center, and it came out of that, I think. 
So this, uh, the Cisco DNA Learning Network offers various resources like courses, certifications, and documentation specifically focused on Cisco DNA Center. So we want the, the courses. Um, I'm going there. Cisco DNA Learning Network to find the courses to learn DNA Center. There we go, training videos. Cisco DNA Center training videos. So DNA, Cisco DNA Center is now called Catalyst Center. So the book, this ebook, DNA Center should be Catalyst Center. Might just have a winner right here. Got to make sure to um, <laughs> not stop. You never know it's around the corner. Another corner, obviously, right? A better corner. A better road. Another corner, a better road. With a better road. And what's around the other corner? Duh. It's forever. Google auto generating password save the day. Auto generators. Passwords. Welcome. I'm in. All right. Let's see some data center training, DNA center training. Okay. What do I want people to know about me? I'm a Python developer. Do you know why? Boys and girls. <laughs> like, how easy is this to learn? It's not like the... You know, when you have an exam, that's it, it's over. You just study the exam. You know what you need, because you have the exam. Um, you can use both the update and context management. So you don't need any, any extra additional books, right? You don't need additional labs, additional materials, additional this, that. All you need is because you're 
everything you're doing is because of the exam. And so what you really need is to pass the exam. Um, it's, it, but that's a little different. That's a little different from the um, job interview where they could like. There's no exam. There is um, assessments. You know, because the, it becomes the interview. There's an interview with interview questions. So from different companies, but what are they using? They also have a structure. It is also um, a structure, like the exam. A little less predictable, but still the same kind of structure. There is a structure. But the exam, the exam for sure is a lot easier. A lot easier. Structure, more definite structure. We call it today. Constant structure, yeah, constant structure. That's dynamic. Mm -hmm. So there's a CCNA, CCDE certification, um, enterprise communications community, data centers. What am I looking for? Are you looking for data center or enterprise? What's the difference between enterprise and Wi-Fi? <sighs> put in the put in that one. Put in that one. Put in that one because I like data centers. And oh, we gotta put this one. No, nope. I'm gonna I'm gonna just gonna go right past that. You know you know what is what's what's really good a really good way to approach cybersecurity. Do everything in virtual virtual lab. Is that way no one can accuse you of anything. They're like, well, I did all my cybersecurity. The only thing I know about cybersecurity is in a virtual lab done it's done the problem problem solved because virtual labs don't touch anything they're all constrained in virtual in a virtual box that's why it's called virtual box doesn't touch or affect anything physical and you can still practice everything all the cyber security so <clears throat> so that's good. But but that's the way to solve the problem. I don't care that problem I don't care about. Like I said, that's why I just chose data center and enterprise because I don't want to deal with the cybersecurity problem. Uh but if I had to, it would be in a virtual box. I would do it in a virtual box. What is all this? I don't know. I'm going to find out. I'm looking for. Da -da -da. Oh. <clears throat> Deep dive internal topics to validate your understanding is CCNA, NP, or IE. See? Uh, fast access 100. Let's go. What am I looking for? No. DNA center, catalyst center. DE, Python, Internet. See, and this is where you started. So you used to go to the network, Python. Oh, what's this? Scripting for automation. What? I can do something like, I can write something like Ansible? Okay. I train, so ACI training, because Internet of Things. ACI Brown Study Research. This is exactly when I, I see, I see Thomas salt stack all over this right here. Next, CCIE training, CCNA training, or CCMP, the money maker. Will your life changed? What, you have a CCMP? What, what? Do you want to do cybersecurity? No. <laughs> no. 
No. Why? Why? Oh, what? You want to be in physical environments where everyone's accusing you? What? What man in the middle attack? What? What man in the middle? No, oh, thank you. I don't want to be the man in the middle. For anyone. I don't give to pay three hundred dollars now. I don't care. Don't go down that. Don't go down that yellow brick road. Go down a different yellow brick road. That's my opinion. That's what I say. Every man to their own. And that's 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 my that's my road. So. Cisco Modeling Labs, training videos. Modeling Labs, LD Framework Training, Secure Workload, Rocky, Secure Cloud Analytics. So, somebody broke in. Oh, really? So then you found yourself in a closet somewhere, right? The rope around your neck. And cloud certifications. Let me buy myself some time, please. You know what I'm saying? Data center training. This is okay. Then the guy comes in. I'm the cybersecurity guy. Cool. <laughs> I'm I don't see it. I don't see the data DNA center. Data center. Data center. Data center. CCNA. Uh, the certifications. Uh, webinars and I'm just looking for videos. Modeling lab. Tracer alternative labs. Thomas was in here at a time, at a point. In the past. Could be modeling labs. Could be tutorials. Search. Ah, I should use a catalog search. Okay, use search. Didn't I see something? Like I had something and then it told me to log in. It says, this was the advice network engineer Christian Killer told. Look at this. Look at this wanker. With. with Colored hair, dyed hair. So I, I can give you advice. Get the get the certificate. That's all. That's all. And get a job. Yeah, I was here. Cisco DNA. Center Insights. 
and it told me to log in. I'm already logged in, so go to the DNA Center Learning. Ah, what was it that I have history? Learning Network this. Salesforce. Cisco's using Salesforce. Who else is using everyone's biggest building in San Francisco? Surprise, surprise. Welcome back. DNA sent there. So um, I'm still not I'm not seeing any videos. I've got text um, already, which is the book itself. Um, so uh, if I can't find any uh, training videos very fast uh, right now, then uh, I'll just uh, you know I'll just stop for now and uh, try to uh, yeah, maybe I'll just uh, start reviewing the books uh, for um, the. Uh, Uh, reading the books on the on the DNA center or the uh, <sighs> catalyst is this is this what I have right here? <laughs> yeah, I thought I had a lot of videos actually. I had oh. I thought I had this. Let's see if it goes in. SDA Cisco DNA Center Overview Troubleshoot SDA Fabric and Troubleshoot SDA. Oh, is this the 10 hours? Yeah. Key information on Cisco DNA Center Fundamental Software Defined Access SDA Network Assurance. Powerful Cisco DNA Center Solutions. That's it. Perfect. Um, by the way, <laughs> I'm not sure if that's the same same like our hand right there. This goes the same thing, and yeah, that's it. That's fine. Oh, no, it doesn't. What? Uh, or is this... Oh, I think I think this is... Yeah, this is better, because... This is... Um, 
three different times. DNA training videos. Implement and use. So this one's better. Yep. So I will have some videos to watch for the class to watch, the students to watch. Uh, it's this right here. Training videos. Training. Uh, and uh, These, these books uh, still look really attractive, so I will go through the DNA Center and still keep looking at these three books, but we know exactly what, um, I know exactly what I'm doing. Uh, DNA Center and Salt Stack, um, what they do, um, what those applications do, and uh, that's where we are right now. So just fully exploring those, those two things, what they do. Thanks for watching. See you next time.